Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve the problem to bounce. This is actually a pretty practical problem and thankfully it's not super complicated to code up. So I really wanna focus on the actual conceptual part, which is probably gonna be the most important for you in your career. Debouncing is about delaying some execution and sometimes it's just about preventing some operation from happening multiple times in some time span. In this case, that is going to be provided for us. But let's first understand what this problem is asking for. Once we know that, I'll tell you some applications of this and then we'll solve the problem. So this is the example code down here. We have the function we're passing in, which is console.log. We're not calling it. That's just what we're passing in. And we are decorating it with debounce and passing in 100 milliseconds as the time threshold. So then our log function is here. We can call it just like a normal log function. Now, just looking at this line over here can be misleading because if we only called this line and we didn't have the stuff below it, this would actually execute and it would execute after 100 milliseconds because that was the delay that was passed in here. So this should execute after 100 milliseconds. But if we have another line of code right after it, this stuff isn't really asynchronous. This second line is going to execute immediately after this one up here. That's why this one gets canceled. Calling this won't cancel it. The next line cancels the previous line because this probably is going to execute before 100 milliseconds have passed. And what we want consecutive calls to this function to do are cancel the previous calls if 100 milliseconds haven't passed yet. And in this case, it hasn't. So this one would cancel this guy. And then the third one would cancel the previous one. And this one doesn't have any calls calls after it. So this one will be the one that actually executes, but it's not going to execute immediately. It will only happen after a hundred milliseconds. And when I say execute, I mean the text will actually be logged because we know, yes, this function is executing, but the inner implementation will be delayed by a hundred milliseconds. Now, suppose we call this at time equals zero milliseconds, and we called the second one over here at time equals 200 milliseconds. That would have given this guy plenty of time to execute after 100 milliseconds at time equals 100 milliseconds, it would execute. And then later, this one would have executed. And if you want to see like an actual representation of that, this is kind of how we could do that. We could delay the second one. First, we would create an anonymous function, which would uh, call this part. And then we would delay it by, let's say, 200 milliseconds. And in that case, both of these would be logged. Now, why would you ever want to do this? Well, it's actually really common. For example, if we're making some type of search query, maybe on Google, and as we type things in, we want it to autocomplete, but probably to autocomplete or to give us like a list of suggestions, it might have to make some kind of API call. And every single time we type in a character, like if I type in NE, the autocompletion will change. But if I'm typing really fast, we probably don't want to have to make 20 API calls if I typed 20 characters. So we might delay it by 100 seconds so that I type 10 characters or let's say eight characters. I type neat code and then I stop for maybe 100 milliseconds. Then it finally makes an API call to list to me the suggestions. Maybe the first one is neat code IO or something like that. So not only does it delay the execution, but it cancels the previous executions. It won't make eight API calls. It'll cancel the first seven. It'll only execute the eight one. Now, another use case, I'm going to open up my uh, dev tools inspect. I'm going to show you the network tab. Every time we press the submit button here, you can see an API call gets made to leak code submit API. It takes in the code that we wrote here as the typed code parameter. And usually when you press submit, the UI changes immediately to prevent you from clicking it again. But what if somehow you were able to double click that it would make multiple API calls? In this case, it doesn't really matter, but you can imagine in some cases, like if we're making payments, you definitely don't want to double charge someone. That's like the biggest problem when it comes to payments, double charging. And it actually still happens in the real world sometimes. And in some cases, the bouncing can be implemented in the UI to prevent this. But to be honest, the best solution for this would be to add some type of item potency key because we would want it so that if we made the same API call multiple times, only one of them executes. Okay, we're probably getting a little bit too far away from the problem at this point. Now let's actually get into the problem. Thankfully, it's not super complicated. I'm gonna comment this out. So as you can imagine, we want to call this function after this many seconds. Well, the best way to do that would be set timeout. We wanna pass in these args. And remember, set timeout, the first parameter it takes is a function 
function. In this case, I'm going to create an inline function and say fn passing in the args that are provided. We want this to execute after t milliseconds. A naive way to write this would have just been to do this, but this is not a function. This is a function call. We don't actually want to call the function yet. We want to pass in a function. So we have to add kind of a wrapper around it so that the args can actually be passed in when we want to execute it. Okay, that's simple enough. We've added the delay, but what if subsequent calls happen? What if now this function is called again? How do we cancel the previous one? And how do we even know if we should cancel the previous one? Well, to cancel a set timeout, we need to store the ID. And I could declare a variable here, but we know we're going to need this on the next execution. So I'm actually going to save this in a variable up here, which I'm going to call ID, which is initially going to be undefined. And with this ID, then we can actually cancel the timeout with clear timeout. But the question is, when do we want to execute this? Where do we want to execute it? Well, in theory, we would only want to call this if the previous function call had not executed yet, meaning this much time had not passed yet. And we'd want to do that before we call the new set timeout. So this is how we would want to do it. But the way this is coded, it's always going to clear the previous timeout. What if the previous function had already been finished executing? What would this do? Would it cause any problems? Can we cancel a set timeout that's already been completed? No, we can't. Even if ID is some real number like one or whatever, and the function had already finished, this cancel, this clear would not do anything. So it's not hurting us to put it there. Okay, well, what if we called this on the first execution of the function when ID is undefined, when we're passing in undefined? Well, if you're scared of that, you could make a check here. And we could even do that with, I think, the nullish coalescing operator. If this is undefined, we would probably not want to execute this. So maybe an if statement would be better. But the good thing is we can actually pass in undefined into this. I didn't know about that. I learned that today as well. So I guess you learn something new every day. But now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. Don't let the runtime fool you. This is a pretty efficient solution. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.